Okay, so today we're going to be looking at sequences. And I've got an example of a sequence out here. So a sequence is a series of numbers that each follow a set rule. So for example here, you can see that the rule is we are adding three between uh, numbers, right? And this is the formula used to generate the whole sequence. So these are incredibly mathematical structures because they're all about patterns. They're very fun to play around with. First, let's try and decompose what a sequence is. So we have a series of numbers and each number in the sequence. So for the example, the first one, this is called a term, right? A term. So this is what we call each number in the sequence. And so for example, this is the first term, the second term, the third term, etc., throughout the whole sequence. And to separate the terms, we just use a comma. So this is just notation. Um, and this kind of separates each term and it helps us keep track of which numbers are the terms. So now I'm going to show you a few examples and we're going to try and work out what the pattern is and what the next few terms in the sequence are. Okay, so I've written out four sequences here, and the question is, what is the next term? Can you find the pattern? So feel free to have a go at this yourself, um, and then I'm gonna work through these one by one. So if we look at the first sequence, first term is 30, then it goes to 27, 24, and 21. And we can see just by looking at the difference between two terms, we are just subtracting three off each term, right? So this is the rule that the numbers are following. So the next terms would be 18, 15, etc., and this would carry on. Okay, for the second sequence, we're not actually changing the size of the numbers. So we just got two minus two, two minus two. So what we're actually doing, just by changing the sign, we can uh, represent this as multiplying by minus one. So multiplying by minus one is just gonna change the sign and keep the number as it is. So for example, the sequence would just carry on as two minus two and just like this for infinity. Okay, so now we've got a sequence where the difference of the terms change. So if we look at the difference here, we have plus one, plus two, plus four. So they're not following a set arithmetic rule, but what we're actually doing is at each stage, we're multiplying by two, right? So this is the rule that describes the, um, the pattern of the sequence. And just by observing this, then we can work out the next few terms. So this goes to 16, then 32, and this is gonna grow exponentially. It's gonna go very big, very quickly. And for the final sequence, this is a bit more interesting because we've actually got two operations at play here. So you can see that the sign of the terms are changing at each number. So plus, negative, plus, negative. And the numbers are also getting smaller. So you get four, minus two, one, and minus a half. So what we're actually doing is we are dividing by two and multiplying by minus one at the same time. So we can represent this as multiplying by minus a half. So four times minus a half, this gives us minus two. And minus two times minus a half, this gives us one, and then the same thing, that gives us minus a half. So this is the rule to generate the whole sequence, and we can work out next few terms, a quarter, minus an eighth, and et cetera. So we worked out the patterns of each of these sequences, and I've got a few more to show you. Okay, so I've got three more sequences here and these are a bit harder. So again, feel free to have a go at these yourself first and then we're gonna work through them. So for the first one, we again have two operations going on at the same time. So it might not seem obvious what the pattern is at first, but we can look at the first few terms and we're actually multiplying by three. So one multiplied by three gives us three and then we're also subtracting by one. So one times three is three, minus one gives us two. And then the same thing here, two times three is six, 
and minus one is five. And then five times three minus one gives us 14. So the next term would be 41, and the one after that would be 120, I think, 122, actually, yeah. So these are the rules to generate the whole sequence. And now for the middle one here, this one's a bit more difficult because we can't really express this mathematically, but we can still find the pattern. So we can think of one as just being a fraction of one over one, right? And then if we look at the numerators and the denominators separately, uh, we are adding one to the numerator. So this is very bad notation here, but we're adding one to the numerator at each term. And the uh, denominator, we're adding two. So we've just got the odd numbers on the denominators. And this is the pattern of the sequence. So this isn't very well written mathematically, but we can still work out what the next numbers are. We just add one to the numerator and add two to the denominator. This gives us nine, five over nine. And then next one, for example, would be six over 11. And this pattern will just carry on forever. So for the last one, this one's quite interesting. Um, it's not quite obvious at the start. And there's actually a few different ways you can approach this. But if we just look at the difference between the terms, so we have here we've got, we're adding three. And then from three to, three to eight, we're adding five. And then from eight to 15, we're adding seven. And if we look at these numbers, we are adding the odd numbers. So starting at zero, adding three, then five, then seven. So the difference between the numbers we're adding actually has its own pattern. So this is kind of a sequence of its own within a sequence. So the rule for this original sequence is that we're adding the odd numbers starting at three, going up. So three, five, seven, and this is kind of the rule that generates all these numbers originally. So we can look at what's gonna be next. We're gonna add nine, and that will give us 24. And for the next one, we're gonna be adding 11. So this will be 35. And we can work out all the numbers in the sequence using this rule.